All right, we should be good to go. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, let me know if there's any issues with the stream and I'll try to fix them. Like, is the audio too low? Is it too high? Is the music too loud? Is it too low? Just let me know and I'll adjust it. Anyway, uh, let me just get some stuff here. Let me actually move chat so I can see it. Alright, so how's everyone doing today? Everything should be good, I think. So, let's see what we can do. Hello, Wi Fi is a bit of a dumpster, so I can't stay for long, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna butcher your name. Uh, Delorean Mel, welcome. Uh, hey there, Daniel. Welcome to the stream, the mad tinkler, <laughs> the tinkler, uh, welcome to the stream, and hey there, mommy, mommy gotcha, <laughs> mommy gotcha, welcome to the stream. So, um, I'm doing this stream, <laughs> Gucci, uh, I'm doing the stream for the Kickstarter that I'm doing, uh, and also any other gold at questions basically now I'm not an expert <laughs> uh, there's a lot for me to learn still but I'll try to answer your questions but we're, we're gonna be focusing on the Kickstarter project for you know the first couple minutes so if you don't know I'm doing a Kickstarter project and I know some of you had questions about that so actually see if I can bring up the page here Think, okay, so this is the Kickstarter project that I'm doing, which is a online course for Goldot. Now it is going to be for Goldot 4. I'm prototyping the projects in Goldot 3.3.3, and I'll be updating it to Goldot 4 uh, when it launches. Yeah, I'll, so I'll be doing that. And some people had questions about the different tiers. So I know I, I got a question about what the difference is between the $25 and $30 tier. The main difference is with the early bird, there's certainly like a limit uh, of how many people can get that. So I believe I said it to the first 10 and yeah, it's the first 10 people, there's like five, pe uh, five left. But basically that's the only difference. So with the early bird, uh, you get a higher discount uh, than with the normal $30 tier. Now the course will be a little bit more when it actually launches. I wanted to give the Kickstarter people that supported the project early a bigger discount uh, than when the actual course launches. So you'll get the most discount with the early bird tier and then you'll still get a discount with the normal tier which is the $30 tier uh, from when the course launches. So those are the main differences with that. If you have any more questions feel free to ask. That's what I'm doing this stream for. Um, so this is one of the projects that uh, will be in the course, which is a simple message app. I'm, I'm taking a break from working on my game to watch you work on yours. Well, I'm actually... I haven't started an indie game yet. I do have an idea though, so I am going to be starting one soon. Uh, which I am planning on launching later, but it's gonna be like it's gonna be way later because it's gonna require a lot of work uh, But for now, let's just focus on this So this is a simple message app that's gonna be for the course that I'm doing or hoping to do So it's pretty simple. So it's it's just gonna this one's gonna be done to show you the basics of multiplayer and how it works so I've actually launched this it, it basically saves your name here and then you can join the chat. So I already, I'm already running the server on the back end. So you can see it's connected to the server. And you can start messaging. Uh, the thing is I need more than one message uh, app running. So I can actually run that with a handy uh, plugin called Multirun. Uh, which actually lets you 
uh, run multiple instances of your game within the Godot game uh, editor. So if I just click this little button here, it will run four instances of the message app project. And you can just name it whatever you want. Tom, Bob, R, R, I know what. Uh, and let's just call this John, I guess. You can just join the chat like so. And then you can start messaging away. This is a test. This is another test. And that's basically how it works. Now, if you don't like <laughs> light mode, you can change it to dark mode, like so. This is a simple little project to show you the very basics of multiplayer with Godot. Uh, that uses how RPC calls work and remote functions and stuff like that. Yeah, for uh, version 3.3.3, you do need a plugin to run multiple instances of your project. I'm using Multi Run, I believe that's what it's called. I can check here. Yeah, it's called Multi Run. So it's a handy little plugin. You can specify how many windows you want to run and stuff like that. Yeah, this is how it works. Now I do know that there is currently a bug with this version of this simple little app where if the use or more than one client has the exact same name then the color will be the same so I know there's that bug and I will be fixing it let me actually show you what I mean so currently so let's just have two people called John and then whatever it doesn't matter for the other ones so if we join the chat with two people with the same name and we just type random gibberish and then this is the other client that's also called John so it will have the same color because you know they're named the same so I need to add some uh, logic to check uh, that you know they're different clients so that's one of the bugs, but that's mainly the Ernie bug that I've seen with it so far. I will be fixing it soon. So that's this little, uh, you know, message app for the course that I'm doing. And then there's the other project as well, which if I quit to my project list, let me actually quit the server that I was running as well. So this is the message app server. So let me actually launch the server for the other the other project. I have a bunch of test projects that I've been doing, so it's kind of a mess right now. Uh, what I have on my project list here. Let me actually see if I can find it. Hold on. Let's see. Where is it? <laughs> I think, uh, what, what did I call it again? Slime Adventure, I think? Yeah, here it is. So let's run the server. And then actually launch the, the project here. Yeah, I actually made Among Us 3D. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll show it to you, since it is a multiplayer game also that I made. Um, so this is the other project. Now I know that with this one there's quite a few bugs that I need to fix uh, in its current implementation. I'm actually not running apparently multi-run on this one yet, but I can actually run multiple instances so it's fine. And there is sound with this one. Let me actually turn it off so since I have music. I forget. <laughs> uh, let me see. Music. So for now, I'm just going to turn this off so that it doesn't play the music. All right. So let me actually run another instance of this here. 
I do have it to be on top of everything, so that, that's why it's on top of that. So let me see. Here it is. I can't see. Okay, let's run. I mean, I can just do it like this. Like so. So it's like a simple Mario 35-like game. It's a platformer. The last one to stay alive wins, essentially. So that's how this one works. So let's just call ourselves Reus because that's, you know, what we go by. And, uh, I don't know, John. <laughs> so we can just click start. It takes you to a waiting room. And then you can click ready and click ready. And it takes you to the game. Now, basically, the way it works is what you see is different from what the other players see. So, the reason the player is a little bit transparent here is because, you know, I wanted to differentiate how the other players look on your screen, but also on your side, the other players don't actually have a collision. So, they can't really collide with enemies. Like I said, they're just there to show you that the other players are connected and to see what they're doing. But basically, you can move around, and it, as, you, as you can see, it works on both clients and all. When you defeat an enemy, it will spawn a new enemy on every client. So that's how it works. Now, as since I am testing it, it's a little bit tedious to test it by yourself. But basically, when you die, it takes you to the you die screen. It takes you back to the lobby. And then if you're the last person alive, then you win the game. And it also takes you back to the lobby where you can rejoin the game and stuff like that. It's it's a simple game so far. I do want to add more stuff like uh, more hazards, maybe a couple more enemies, moving platforms, and other things like that. I do need to fix some of the bugs with it as well, and I'm planning on doing that soon. I am going to have to refactor a lot of the code because right now it's a lot of spaghetti code, uh, so <laughs> there's that. So I know someone said uh, that they're curious about the Among Us. So yeah, the way the enemies work are their client side. So their client side enemies, and let me actually see if I can open up the test level. So they're client side enemies, but uh, let me see, where is it in the code that I wrote? So in one of the codes basically I'm checking when an enemy dies and when an enemy dies it sends a remote function to the server which essentially will uh, tell the server to spawn a new enemy on all the clients and these little points right here are the spawn positions for where the enemies can actually spawn so it randomly picks a spawn point to spawn the enemies in on all the clients uh, which you know like I said it sends that signal or you know that call from the server to all the clients to spawn that enemy on all the client sides so that's how it works essentially Then for the actual players, I'm using a remote function to basically sync their position across the network. And then it sends that information to the server, which the server then sends that information back to all the other clients through a sync function, I believe. I think I'm, it's either a sync function or a remote function. Like I said, I am going to be refactoring a lot of the code uh, for it because right now it's a bit of a mess, so it's a little bit hard to understand it. But uh, yeah, that's how it's going. And hey there, uh, everyone that joined the stream. Hey there, White Wolf. Hey there, Rikian. Sorry if I butchered your name. But yeah, if you have any more questions about how it works or 
anything that I'm planning on adding or anything, feel free to ask. But that's this little project here. Like I said, I am going to be adding more hazards. I may, I'm hoping to add some more enemies also. Uh, potentially some uh, abilities. Maybe like if you get something, some collectible in the world, it causes the screen to darken on all the other players' sides or something like that. I haven't decided just yet, I'm still figuring out all the uh, mechanics I want for it and then I'll be re refactoring a lot of the code to make it a lot easier to understand. What if you use cheat engine to move enemies around or is there so sad? So I'm keeping things really simple with the course. So basically I'm not worrying about... Um, so. When it comes to multiplayer, you can do things very complicated in a very complicated way. So basically, I'm using a dedicated server connection for this one, uh, for this game. And you can have what you would call, what I would call, uh, proper, you know, network architecture, uh, which is a lot more complicated than what I'm doing here. Uh, basically, the way you, do you want to actually set up a online multiplayer game if you're worried about uh, players cheating or if you want to have user authentication or stuff like that is you would essentially have your server and then you would have your clients you would have your clients to probably most likely want to connect them through a gateway uh, so that they can get a uh, access token and then with that access token you want to have that be sent over to the server so that it actually can get compared and so that the user can be logged in and there's a lot of different things that go into how networking works and that's a pretty <laughs> complicated thing to do like i said it requires gateways probably one or two gateways that you want to go through and then access tokens and all this other stuff so I want to keep things very simple with this course and not uh, overcomplicate everything basically and just get uh, people up and running with you know making prototype multiplayer games for their games as soon as possible without worrying about all that unnecessary complexity basically. So yeah, that, so that would be kind of outside the scope of this course. I'm not really worrying about user authentication or if, you know, they're cheating or stuff like that. I mean, you could, uh, to prevent cheating, you the way you can do that is you could make um, what is called an offer, offer, <laughs> English, authoritative server. Basically, the server will handle everything to do with the logic. So, and then your clients would be what's called dumb clients essentially so basically your clients all they would be doing is just checking for input and then the server would be processing all the you know physics and everything and that way um, your user doesn't really have you know access to all that they can only tell the server oh I press the button to move right and then the server handles that that's a way you can do it. That's also a little bit complicated to do. So I'm not really worrying about that. <laughs> Let me see the chat here. Oh, that's nice. You're finally gonna start making more tutorials. Uh, re re <laughs> I seriously can't pronounce your name. Uh, Ron Ronjian? <laughs> uh, that's nice though. I, I, I have seen that you've took a little bit of a break. I think it's been, what, two months since you last uploaded? Uh, it's nice you're finally getting back to it. And you have a question, Super CJ. Alright, let's see. What if I use cheat? Uh, we already saw that. Let's see. I don't know anything about the real life. I host make my game. I just make my game. And how's it different from my other videos that I did? Are you talking about the top-down multiplayer game that I did? Um, the uh, let me actually see. I think I have my channel pulled up. 
So you're talking about, I actually have it on my Kickstarter page also, you're talking about this little game right here, right? My top-down shooter that I did, this multiplayer. Assuming that's the one you're talking about. <laughs> like dungeon, run gin, run gin. Okay, okay, that's a lot better. So this one, I'm assuming that's the one you're talking about. Well, basically, what I want to do with the course is actually explain things a bit better than what I did in this example here. And also, I want to, you know, do a few different mechanics than what I did with this one as well. Like, I actually want to have animations for the, uh, for this simple little slime game with, like, the players moving. And that's actually something you actually have to do over the network also uh, to actually get them to play properly. If you actually watched my, uh, uh, where is it? If you actually watched my Among Us 3D video, there's a part where I talk about myself, you know, making the animations play for all the clients and how I ran into the issue where I was in control of the animations for all the other clients, but my own animation didn't play. And I had to figure that out and how to do that over the network. So that's one of the things. Also, audio is another thing that you also have to sync over the network. Uh, so when you shoot and stuff. Here I kind of did it the, the budget way where I kind of cheated and had the audio play for like shooting. I haven't decided yet if I do want to synchronize audio because technically the players, what they see is a little bit different from what you see, so uh, there's still things I have to decide for that. But yeah, when it comes to multiplayer, there's a lot of things that go into it and a lot of decisions you have to make, like I said. Uh, I think also if you want to um, interact with rigid bodies. You also have to kind of do that over the network where you actually have to apply a impulse to the uh, rigid body over the network uh, so that it affects all it affects the object on all the clients essentially so yeah there's a lot of <laughs> different things that go into it it's a little bit of a pain honestly <laughs> and there's not that many resources available so that's why I'm, i want to do this also Started doing networking tutorials and I saw yours after and then I realized damn this is covered so I had to focus elsewhere. Now I just uh, point people to your channel. <laughs> nice uh, regen. I mean you could also do other things with multiplayer though. I'm sure that other people would enjoy the content and stuff and you know the more the merrier. I mean I literally had to learn how to do this uh, from scratch on my own. I had no tutorials whatsoever uh, on how to do it. Uh, there is one by, uh, I believe it's its name's Game Development Center that did a dedicated server connection and that's basically the only other tutorial that I've seen that does a dedicated server connection. Uh, but his tutorial is, uh, it's good, but it's for more advanced users. Like, it's very complicated for someone to starting out uh, with multiplayer. To do a tutorial about the procedural gen animation. Um, procedural animation is a bit of a tricky thing. Like, I could. I think there's actually already a tutorial that someone did on procedural animation. I'll have to check. I can actually link you it, though. I think I saw one. I'll, I can, I, I can uh, send you the link later. Probably don't want to sync audio because you risk lag causing all kinds of problems. Yeah, that is also a thing that you want to keep into account with multiplayer games. The lag and also how many times you actually want to send RPC calls to the server and stuff. That all has an effect on it. There's ways you can limit it and stuff like that. You played the Diablo 2 multiplayer beta and it was bad enough with occasional teleporting. Yeah, you do want to also implement uh, lag compensation. Uh, that's one of the things that you would want to do. 
uh, with your games. A uh, way you can actually do that is by using tween nodes to basically interpolate the player's movement and smooth it out a little bit if there's some lag. And there's some other workarounds like that. Now, now let me actually go to... Let me see... So, with the... Uh, about the Kickstarter, if we actually meet the base goal, uh, I will be showing you how to do the little message app that you saw. That's, you know, like a mobile message app. And then the uh, slime game. Um, like I said, I'm still working on some of the mechanics. But another thing is if we meet uh, like the second uh, stretch goal, basically, that would, I would be showing you how to also do a peer-to-peer -peer game um, using got, uh, Godem, or Gotham or Gotham.io. Gotham .io. Or <laughs> I misspelled it. Uh, let's see, I missed the M. So if you don't know what this website is, I can actually type it. It's actually a pretty nice little website uh, which lets you host your your Godot games. And the thing that's nice about it is you can actually host your multiplayer games on this platform for free. So that's uh, something I would be showing you with the stretch goal. And it's actually pretty simple to do. Uh, it actually supports that kind of out of the box. So, let me see if I can actually put where it says. Let me see. Yeah, so they do support multiplayer out of the box. It's actually pretty simple to host the game on, on here and actually have it work where you can actually have your players connect to one another just through this service and it's free. So that's actually something really cool about this. Now for the you know the base goal, I would be actually showing you how to actually host uh, both projects to a VPS or dedicated server, um, and how to actually get the server to run there and then have players from all across the world connect to it. So well, that's one of the things I'm going to be showing you. Yeah, I agree, the more the better, but for me, I want to try focusing on tutorials that haven't been done before, like Game Maker has surfaces right, which makes blood so easy, go that. It's so much more difficult, I finally learned how to do it, and I've searched everywhere. No one else has done it, as in drawing a texture, not many, many objects. I think most channels focus on beginner only. For myself, I try to focus on people who have finished the beginner tutorial. It's not beginner friendly, <laughs> left alone. Your tools are awesome for this. So for, well, for the base goal, which would be my little message app. I actually, I'm not showing it. Uh, I actually included the download links to this though as well on the Kickstarter. So it's under updates. So you can actually go to my itch page and you can check it out for yourself. So the little message app here and the slime adventure game here. They are running on a dedicated server connection basically. Right now they're running on my local machine since I'm still testing it out. But I will be putting it on a VPS, so virtual private server. And I will be hosting the server project for both of these projects on there. And then pretty much anyone with the server IP address can connect to that server and join your game essentially. So, and there's a little bit of a trick with that. So the way I'm, I do things is I actually use a Windows VPS and to actually be able to run a server project on a Windows VPS is you actually need to download an additional thing. I forget the name of it right now. I don't have it on, yeah, I can't think of it right now, but you do have to download a specific thing to actually be able to run it. Uh, you have to have it on the same server, uh, not the same server. Well, yeah, you have to have it on the same server, but you have to have it on the same folder that the server project is in so that you can actually run the server project on the Windows VPS. So I would show you how to do all that with this project and the slime adventure project. Now for the stretch, the first stretch goal, I would show you how to do a peer-to-peer -peer game 
and how to host it for free on this platform here, which lets you host your Godot uh, games for free. And it actually, like I said, it supports multiplayer out of the box. So it's pretty simple to do. And they actually have pretty um, nice features such as adding a uh, little room system so that you can make like different rooms for your lobbies and stuff like that with their plugin and stuff like that. So those would be covered in uh, some of the stretch goals, uh, not with the uh, base, uh, the base goal basically. Like this is this is actually a pretty good uh, service. I'm actually might do a separate tutorial on it, but it actually supports like fetching lobbies and stuff like that. So they actually have like a little example of how it works and stuff like that. So I've this I've been experimenting with this and uh, figuring it all out because it is a separate plugin that you have to learn and they have their you know their own functions and stuff that you have to use. So let me actually see if I can get this little thing so to run. So let me see lobbies. Here we go. It should be lobbies, I think. And you can set it to have a room system and join a lobby. I can't find the specific example. They do have an example that shows you how to do it. So basically you would click host and then you would send this link here to uh, your friends that you want to join the game and then they can join the game just through this link. And that's how this works and then you know there's a, their documentation and stuff that you would have to read and stuff if you want to do it on your own. But this is one of the stretch goals that I would you know show you how to do. And yeah multiplayer is pretty complicated. <laughs> It's it's not a lot of people actually mess that I know have messed around with it. We're all learning, and in five to ten years, a new thing comes out. They're actually, uh, I believe, they released a uh, news blog where they said that they were actually going to uh, change a little some of the things uh, about multiplayer with the new version of Godot 4. So that's part of the reason that I decided to do this course for Godot 4 also. Because they're they, they did mention that they were going to add some new things and get rid of some stuff like R sets. So if you messed around with multiplayer in Godot, then you kind of know what R sets are. Basically, they're variables that you can synchronize over the network. So they're going to potentially get rid of that and add some other things. So I, I'm going to have to look at what changes they make with the new version of Godot. And someone actually mentioned my little um, Among Us 3D game. So let me actually show you that. Let me just do don't save from that. So my little Among Us game is actually a multiplayer game. That It's actually the first multiplayer game that I made and the first 3D game that I ever made. So it's an, it's an interesting thing. <laughs> so let me actually run it. It's gonna have some loud music, I know that. So let me actually open it up and see if I can adjust the music so that it's not loud. Oh, <laughs> it's not... I thought it was. Let me actually check. I'll just put the Kickstarter uh, link on chat if you want to check it out. So let me actually get the link here. Do, do. So that's the Kickstarter link if you want to check it out. But yeah, this is the first ever multiplayer game that I did. It's called Amongst Us Garbage Edition. Uh, and uh, it was also my first 3D game that I made. I've actually been experimenting with 3D a lot more uh, recently. But uh, the code for this is a mess, by the way. You do not want to look at it. <laughs> uh, let me actually turn off the music.
So, if I run it... Oops, I ran the run one. <laughs> Hold on, let me see. I wonder if it still works. It has been a little while since I last made this. It should still work. So let's see, raise two, and then you can select your color. Join game, join game. I, I guess I didn't actually run the server, so let me actually run the server for it. Among a server. Okay. Do, do, do. Let me actually relaunch it, or let me actually check some of the code here. Server to see if it's actually connecting to the proper default IP address, and it wasn't. That's the issue. One. Two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. It's the default IP. Now it should work. How old am I? Uh, take a guess. I, I want to see what age you guys think I am. <laughs> I'm 10 next year. <laughs> nice. Test. Alright, it should work now, I think. Oh, it's still not working. Hmm, interesting. I'll have to check the code, I guess. <laughs> or actually, hold on. Let me close these right here. And run the server. Eh. Let's see. There we go. Now it's actually <laughs> working. I think I need more than two players though for this one. So let me just run another one. This is just gonna be gibberish, select a different color, join game, ready. There we go. So it is actually still working. <laughs> So this is my little Among Us game that I made. So... I don't remember the controls. <laughs> okay, so... Yeah, it's... This is uh, one of the games that I did. Well, the first multiplayer game that I actually did. interesting. How do I get rid of chat? Okay, there we go. But in the real Among Us, the players have to be five or more. I mean, for this one, I set it to like three because I was testing things out and stuff. So you can actually turn off the light and stuff if you're the imposter. Both of those are, are imposters, so you don't see the difference. But, if I actually show you this one, this is a bystander and this is how they see things, basically. I think t uh, Tab was the map. Yeah, Tab was the map. So it shows you the map of where you're going and stuff. But yeah, this was the first multiplayer game that I actually made. And first 3D game that I made also. <laughs> it was a pain to make, I'll, I'll tell you that. And yeah, I use default icons for everything, and then that turns the light back on, as you can see. But yeah, this is a 3D multiplayer game using a dedicated server connection. And it was a pain to make. 
<laughs> it was very much a pain to make. And then you can kill the, uh, the bystander, I think. And I killed him. And since he was the only bystander, the imposters win. I mean, I could do this for the course also, but that would be one of the stretch goals. Uh, I do want to do a 3D game for one of the stretch goals, so I haven't decided what type of game. I was thinking of doing a racing, a racing game if we reach that stretch goal, but uh, I don't know. We'll we'll see. <laughs> and also, if you add 25 years onto that, I'm going 22. You'll be 35. So you're 22, uh, Runjin? Huh. The video stopped? Uh, I mean, it's not showing anything from my end on, um, you know, drop frames or anything. Try refreshing. I actually did make a YouTube video on it. It's pretty cringy. <laughs> it's an older video and it's pretty cringy. It's this one right here. I made my first ever 3D online multiplayer game. I did it eight months ago. <laughs> oh, I'm, uh, you were guessing I'm 22. Uh, close. I'm 23. So you're not far off. I know Danny did the same thing. Danny wasn't actually the first one that I saw that did it though. I forget which YouTuber it was that I actually saw that did it. But they didn't actually do it uh, for a multiplayer. The one that I originally saw. And like I said, I did actually upload a video of it, so... <laughs> it is there. And you can actually... Let me actually leave a link to the itch projects if you want to check them out I'll just put them in chat so if you want to check them out and download them for yourselves uh, they're there like so so those are the links to the little message app for you know a mobile message app and then the little slime game like I said I do know there's quite a few bugs with the slime adventure game still that I need to address and then for the message app here um, there's one bug that I know of, and I'll be fixing that soon. Anyway, if you guys have any more questions, feel free to ask, uh, because I do have to end the stream in a couple minutes, like in five or so minutes, so. Also, uh, since I'm talking about Godot in general and stuff also, not just multiplayer, I do, some people have asked me on my uh, Discord that they want to see a tutorial for a horror game. Um, <laughs> we'll see, we'll see what happens with that. I could do like a mini series on it, like how you could get the atmosphere for a horror game and stuff like that. Now we'll see what happens. I do plan on doing a lot more 3D uh, stuff for my channel. Uh, so 3D tutorials. I am still gonna do 2D tutorials also. And um, and yeah, we'll see what ha the future has. <laughs> like I said, I do. Uh, if we meet like the 3D uh, stretch goal, the online multiplayer stretch goal, I haven't decided what type of game yet. Uh, if we meet it, I think it's gonna be a racing game. I'm not entirely sure yet. A uh, car racing game. But yeah, if you have. Any questions about the Kickstarter or anything in general, feel free to ask in uh, the next couple minutes. Do, 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 do. Mm. 
me actually put the link I'll probably put the link on it uh, after the stream ends in the description also if uh, so that you can get it from the description By the way, uh, Ranjan, <laughs> Ranjan, if you're still there, what's your next tutorial gonna be? I'm curious. What I'm probably gonna do for my next tutorial is probably gonna be a safe system for our game. So look forward to that. It's probably gonna be coming out in, in a few days from now. I'm also planning on doing a special video for 1,000 1, subscribers since I haven't done that yet. And also for my one year anniversary of making games essentially. <laughs> Dumping enemies. So hopefully I can get that video out soon as well. We'll see what happens with all that. That should have been duping, dumping enemies. I mean, the way the enemies on this project work is there's two types of enemies right now which are pretty similar. They're just different colors, and then this one checks to see if there's, you know, a pit and changes direction so that it doesn't fall into the pit. While this one over here actually does, you know, fall into the pit. I do want to add a couple more uh, enemies, maybe like a flying enemy that chases you if you're in range and stuff like that. We'll see. Like I said, I'm still deciding on all the mechanics on it, but we'll see. How to make a Terraria game in Godot, jeesh, that sounds like a challenge. <laughs> but hey man, I'm very interested in seeing it. <laughs> we could make that Terraria in multiplayer. I mean, if you... Maybe, maybe. That is, if you help. <laughs> if you help, because multiplayer, like I said, it's such a pain uh, to do. It, it's a lot of trial and error. Uh, with some stuff. I mean, we could do a very basic uh, multiplayer. Uh, and I would probably go with a... Uh, just to make it a lot easier on us if we were to do that. Uh, probably go with a peer-to-peer -peer connection using the handy little website that I showed you earlier. This right here. To make it a lot easier for us. <laughs> But yeah, that, that would actually be pretty interesting. Yeah, for visual, uh, visible collision shapes, all you have to do is go to debug and then visible collision shapes and there you go. That's how you see your visible collision shapes. Another thing with multiplayer is so you want to go to other settings most of the time and then you want to go to debug for network and then change the port here so that you don't get some weird error here that doesn't show you anything in the output. We <laughs> make GTA 6 and go that and go though. <laughs> that that is not happening dude. That is way too much work. Especially if for one person it's like there's no way it's happening for one person. You need like a large team to do that type of game. It's impossible. Well, I, you can't say impossible, but it would take many, many, many years, essentially, <laughs> to do. I 
I mean, it still shows when you do runtime. So let me let me see. So if I do collision polygon two D and just make whatever. Oh, you mean like when you export? I think that's what you mean, right? Because you can actually run it and it does show you it. But you probably mean when you export the game, right? Okay, I, I think I understand what you're asking. Hang though, you don't think so? I mean, uh, it depends. It depends. It would still be a lot of work. If it's just basic movement and shooting enemies or punching an enemy or whatever kind of combat system you want to have, then it shouldn't actually be too bad, I think, multiplayer-wise. <laughs> uh, but uh, for other stuff, it might. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, that's actually interesting. I haven't actually seen anyone do that. I don't know exactly why you want to have visible collision shapes for a exported game, but hey, uh, we'll see, we'll see. Anyway guys, we are getting pretty close to ending the stream. I have like a minute left and then I do have to go. So if you have any last minute questions about the Kickstarter, a Godot, or anything, feel free to ask now and if not, then we're gonna get pretty close to closing the stream or ending the stream I'll probably actually do another stream next week as well uh, with some more updates to the Kickstarter projects since I do plan on working on them a bit more over the weekend since I'll actually finally have some time to work on them so probably next week I'll do another stream on it Alright, uh, Ranjin, we'll see what happens. I think my email and my Discord link are on my channel, so if you need to find it, they should be on my channel. Uh, I'm pretty sure at least. Let me actually check before I give you wrong information. Uh, I think it's this tab. So in my about, and yeah, my email should be there, and then my Discord link's right here. So if you want to go over Discord, you can... You know, there's my Discord link, and then there's my email. Alright guys, since you guys don't have any more questions, uh, I'll probably see you next week. I'll do another live stream. Uh, hopefully it's a lot more organized, <laughs> since I kind of ran into some uh, stream issues beforehand. I was planning on doing it a lot earlier. Um, but, you know, I ran into some issues and stuff like that. But, yeah, hopefully next week I'll have some more time, and it's a lot more organized. But... Anyway, that will actually do it for today's stream, guys. So thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you guys in the next one. See you guys later.